Well, hello and welcome to this, the first in a long, I hope, season of podcasts for Horizon Youth Zone, the as yet untitled podcast. We've been sitting here for the last 20 minutes trying to think of a name and we couldn't come up with one, so we decided that we would actually let you, the listener, decide what this podcast should be called. Um, that doesn't mean we'll take your suggestions, of course, so if you're thinking of being rude, that's fine too. It just means we won't use it. Um, but uh, it, we do think that that would be a good idea to let people decide. So for now, it's the As Yet Untitled podcast. Uh, I am guest hosting today down here at Project Renewable Studio at Alexandra Dock. And my very special guest, in fact, I feel as though I should be stood up in the presence of royalty, uh, is Lucy otwell Key, the new Chief Executive Officer of the Horizon Youth Zone. Hi, Lucy. Hello, Rich. How are you doing? I'm actually all right. Um, uh, despite, uh, you know, appearances, I, I probably look a little bit tired than I actually am, but I've had a busy week so far. I've been to London a couple of times and it's been a, a busy week, but it's nice to be back here in Grimsby. And it's in p- particularly nice to be talking to you 50 yards away from your building site. I know, it's so exciting. Literally, you can see it from here. It's so exciting. And now the scaffolding up is up and it's, uh, yeah, we're starting to see the site progress. It's, uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing. So for, if there's anybody out there that doubts whether the Horizon Youth Zone will actually ever take shape and come out of the ground, I can tell you now, I can see it coming out of the ground today. It's there. The scaffolding is there. Fantastic. Well, listen, Lucy, what I wanted to do today, if that's okay with you, with this first episode of the As Yet Untitled Horizon <laughs> podcast, is dig a little bit into your past, really, um, and, and let the listeners understand how you've come to, to be the chief exec of Horizon. Because, of course, that people don't start life at chief executive level. They start at all sorts of places. And you told me a few stories earlier on of what you used to do when you were young. Mm-hmm. And on the basis that Horizon and, and Onside, really, its project plan is to inspire and uh, give aspiration to young people. Where, where did it start for you? So I think what started for me is that from a very early age, I enjoyed working. So... Um, School was cool. I didn't always go to school for the right reasons. I enjoyed going to see my friends. And yeah, it, it was the late 90s. So uh, yeah, it was an interesting and challenging time for education, I think, in general. But what I found from an early age is I loved working. I loved being around people and being part of a team. So from a very early age, I was on the Cliff Up Seafront in a kiosk, flipping burgers, making candy floss, donuts shouting 10 sticks of rock for a pound and I did that for a good few years and got my first car out of it, my first H-Reg Fiesta <laughs> um, and I, I got that out of that job and I learned so much doing that job. Within a year the, the owners of the takeaway of the uh, kiosk were leaving me to run it at 15, 16 because I just took to it naturally and enjoyed it and, and really from there it was a raft of customer service roles. I, I decided I took a year out after my A-levels because I really just did not know what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, careers advice wasn't the best back then and I, I kind of thought I had a choice of, of, of retail or an office really. So I took a year out, worked, and then decided to go back to college and I went back to where, went to Grimsby Institute and did my degree. Um, and at the same time was working at, at Tesco mm-hmm. and at Hewitt Circus as a, as a checkout operator. And I did that really for three years whilst I was doing my degree. And I would say that was the first time in my life that I academically applied myself, which I did not do. And I know I've got my mum's, uh, my mum ringing in my ears because I did not apply myself at school, but I did when I went to college. So, so really that was, that was sort of the, the turning point alongside being very, very engaged in youth services as, as a youngster. So I was active, we actively went to the, to the youth club, the UFI, um, and also I was an army cadet for many years. So yeah, I, it really was lots of different facets and lots of different experiences and working with lots of different people that sort of started me off on the, on a on a path, if you like. It's really interesting, isn't it, that your life uh, is, is is appearing to come full circle from what you just mentioned about. Oh, I must get this right from the Ufi days. The Ufi days. There was, no the, TH there was back no then. There was no TH in youth. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, and and in many ways, I guess what you've just described is a is a 
a natural flair um, for management, whether you saw it that way or not. I think that we talk a lot about the squiggly line of life and everybody makes a series of micro decisions along the way. They just don't recognise them as decisions until they look back and realise that it was a turning point. And you use that expression, it was a turning point. But with everything that you've just described is kind of what you want to instill in the young people that are going to be members of Horizon Youth Centre. Absolutely. I think when you're younger and you don't really know what you want to do, yes, opportunity is, is, a, a, is a massive part of it. But also having that ambition, having the confidence and the resilience to try new things is also vital. And I think one of the most important parts of Horizon Youth Zone and why I was so passionate about getting involved is the opportunity for young people to try new things. Mm. So I tried different things. I tried other youth organisations and they just weren't a fit for me. Whereas I found Army Cadets for me worked really well. And that's because I loved the outdoor adventure, the teamwork. I'm very good in a hierarchical situation. And I just found that that kind of outward bound Mm. um, youth engagement worked for me, but it's not gonna work for all young people. So it's about finding what works for each young person. And that's where Horizon has the opportunity to do that because there's so many different things that young people can try. Well, that's the point I was just going to make, actually, because the, you know I, I say this a lot, so forgive me if you've heard me say this before, but the only way to find out is to find out. Mm-hmm. And, and one of the things, find out what you're good at, find out what your natural attitude is towards, and, and also what you enjoy. Because I think anybody starting their working life should start at the very least by trying to do something that they enjoy. Um, you know, it doesn't always work out that way, but it's a great starting point. But if you don't know what you want to do and you don't know what you enjoy, then the only way to find that out is to try lots of different things. Absolutely. And my experience of Horizon um, so far, and I was lucky enough to go over to uh, the uh, youth zone in South Manchester before, before the pandemic, was just how incredibly engaged the the all of the kids were there in the variety on offer. It wasn't, I'm coming to do this. It was, I don't know what I'm coming to do. Let's do something different today. It was amazing. Uh, it, it, it can be quite mental. So I, I spent three months over at Manchester Youth Zone uh, on placement as part of my induction into the role. I started on in October. So I've only been really back in Grimsby full time for about three weeks, three or four weeks. And one of the first things that struck me when I went on to session, which is when the doors open and young people come in, is how how they just go from one activity to the next. Mm. So one minute they're playing basketball, the next minute they're up the climbing wall, uh, then they might be doing arts and crafts, then they might be doing some baking in the training kitchen, or they might be playing football and they they can literally move from activity to activity uh, which I think is the beauty of the uh, on-site youth zone model mm. in that it's about trying so coming to the youth zone is not going to make you a world-class boxer mm-hmm. it's not going to make you a world-class rock climber what it's going to do is hopefully inspire you to try something and then follow that through where however you do that whether that's through a specialist club or 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 through any other kind of agency but it's about trying something new and that's that's always the way that that, the inspiration happens is because in in a lot of cases you don't know that you like something until you've done it no so you, you need to make that sort of leap of faith in a way to just have a go um, and I think it's one of the things that's been missing certainly in Grimsby I'm from Grimsby as I know you are um, really for a lot of years is a place for that to happen so we, we have in many ways a generation of people that are growing up in the area that don't believe that this area has anything to offer and yet we know that's not the case uh, and where we're sitting today in the in the recording studio at Project Renewable, this whole environment was designed to let people express that opinion. Um, and when you listen to people talk about Horizon, it's pretty much all positive. There'll always be the naysayers that don't believe that anything's going to happen until they see it. Well, they don't have to wait long because, as you said, the cranes are on site and they're building today as we speak. But for those people that, are, that can't wait for this to happen and, and to open, what, what, what's your advice to them? So my advice is that, do you know what, we've got some amazing youth services already in Grimsby and Cleethorpes and North East Lincolnshire, we really do. Mm -hmm. We've got some amazing pockets of activity. And what I would say is um, 
getting first of all get involved with local youth services second of all if you or a member of your family wants to join the young person's development group and be part of that change uh, if you're whether it's yourself whether it's your uh, child whether it's your niece your nephew whoever um, if they want to get involved that young person's development group really is shaping the future of horizon so over the last few years they really have spearheaded the, the whole project and they will continue to do so over the next 18 months to the point where my my hope is that they will transition to a a, a youth shadow board where we can continue to have their voice strongly as part of the narrative so i think there's lots of different ways but you can get involved through YP, through the young persons development group but get in contact um, you can find all of our details on the Horizon website, uh, get in contact, contact and if it's something passionate that either yourself, a young person or if you're part of an organisation that wants to get involved with Horizon, just get in touch with me or the team. So that young person's development group is interesting because I, I think what gets lost in a lot of cases and certainly in the business world is, is that the, the, that age group voice mm -hmm. doesn't seem to matter enough to employers and to organisations to ask their opinion. I've said a number of times rather contentiously that they should stop doing consultations with adults about what Grimsby needs and start doing it with the kids because actually it's their town and it will be their town. So the development of it is massively important. And I think this is one thing that Onside do so beautifully is include the youth members, if, if we're going to call them that, um, in those decisions, in those development plans. So somebody listening to this today that thinks, actually, I'd quite like to have a go at that. It's as simple as go to the website and, and have a conversation and get involved. Is that right? Absolutely. Uh, what's really interesting in the Young Persons Development Group, they, they get involved in everything. So, for example, they have signed off, signed off on the colour of the uh, staff kit. Mm -hmm. They will be... What colour is it, by the way? Uh, we're going to be blue, but that's brand new information that only got signed off yesterday. Interesting. And it's a baby blue. Interesting. It's a scoop. I like that. We'll have a scoop on it. I was smiling. Finn's, so my wonderful producer and engineer, Finn, is taking photographs as we speak. So. Yeah, sorry. I got, I, my attention went to I the camera. I noticed you instantly I, I was smiled. Thinking, that was, that my was my attention went elsewhere then for a minute. I just looked at him thinking, what the hell are you doing? And you just went, ta-da! Ta-da! So, yeah, yeah. And the posy face, as my friends call it. Yeah. Um, baby blue. So uh, Yeah, baby yeah. blue. Like so, that. yeah, um, and it fits with the horizon because the, the, uh, the name horizon came from the young people of North East Lincolnshire. Yeah. The logo was designed by the young people of North East Lincolnshire. Yeah. Um, the young people really are first and foremost, and one of our main values is young people first. I think something that I want to bring to the raft of amazing values that we have as part of the on-site network is that young person first, young people first, staff always, team always. We need to make sure that we build a culture and a team who are uh, whose vision and mission meet with the purpose of what the youth zone is. And to do that, we need to make sure we're looking after our team staff and volunteers both are going to be very important yeah no i agree and and that that sense of belonging that sense of togetherness it was something that i witnessed when i came over to manchester um, blew me away actually uh, um, it doesn't take much to make me cry lucy if i'm honest um uh, and i came out of that place just really crying of, of happiness that 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 something as simple in many ways as creating a place a safe place an environment that that gives permission uh, for young people to try stuff, I think is, is such a wonderful thing to have in this world. And I'm all credit to Onside as an organisation. And, and really you guys for take, bringing this to Grimsby. It's, it's been a long time coming, hasn't it? Mm, it has. It's been a few years. Uh, and I, I know that uh, many people probably didn't think it was going to happen. But it is. It is happening. And, uh, do you know, the message is, for me, it's, it's really clear. And a lot of the youth zones have it on the walls. And apologies to our audience if I get it the wrong way around <laughs> but it really is somewhere to go something to do and someone to talk to that is the principle of a youth zone it is about working with young people to raise ambitions increase opportunities and yes it's about trying and it's about having fun first and foremost it's about having fun making friends but wider than that there is this sense of a wider skills development 
building confidence, communication skills. We are not going to be those young pers- young people's final destination. No. We're there to help them on their way. We're not a college, we're not a school, we're not their job, uh, well, unless they want to, to work for us in the future. What we are is an enabler to support them with those wider soft skills to help them move on to that next step. And I think that's what our mission is going to be. That's a really nice way of putting it as well, because I think so many times when, when organisations sort of arrive in a town, first and foremost, they don't understand the town that they've arrived in, uh, and they believe that one size fits all. And of course, Grimsby, as we know, is, is very different, and it has uh, its own pulse and its own pace that it goes at. Um, but also, as you said at, at the start of that, um, there's been a, an, an abiding feeling that nothing ever happens. Um, mm-hmm. And if anything, that the fact that it is will bring half of the people uh, with you because they're, they're, they've been waiting patiently for something to happen. So in, in many ways, the front half of the audience, if you like, are already yours. Mm-hmm. How do you propose to reach those at the back of the room that, that don't think that this is for them? Because they're, they're for me, are always the more interesting characters. Mm. I, funny you saying that, What one of the um, the priority areas I'm working on at the moment now, I'm back from Manchester, is community engagement. Mm. So pretty much my weeks at the moment, other than going out and seeing new zones at other parts of the country across the network, is getting out into the community, whether that is community forums, community groups, schools, colleges, youth services, I am trying to get out to see as many of them as possible because I need to make sure that the conversations that we're having, that we can see how those true partnerships and that community spirit can come together to create something special here. I I think that one of the, uh, and I can say this, I'm born and bred in Grimsby, um, we've got such a powerful community spirit Mm. in this area. We are, we are, as a, as a town, as a region, we're very passionate, but we are also the first to have a go at our own area. And I think it's just built into us, into our psyches. And that's fine because, yeah, I know there's things that's not happened or happened over the last 40 plus years I've been around, um, but we need to do better. And the only way that we can do better is to work together. And the only way we can work together is to have those conversations. So at the moment, it really is about me getting out there, speaking to people, doing some comms, working with yourselves, talking to as many stakeholders as I can to talk about the purpose and the mission of the Youth Zone. I like the fact that you simply don't accept the past has to create the future. It can influence it. It can can be certainly part of it. And, and, you know, we can nod to it. We, We do that with... The studios here at Project. Project is spelled with a K because that's linked to its Scandinavian spelling, and of course Grimsby has a Scandinavian past. Mm. Um, so, but that doesn't necessarily mean nodding to something doesn't mean that it will always be that way. No. And, I, and I think there is a, a degree of acceptance, grudgingly, in 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 our lovely area that nothing will ever happen. Um, and I, for one, I can't wait to see the look on on the faces of those that suggest that too frequently, shall we say, uh, when something actually does. Yeah, and we've got to remember, I mean, I'm proud of being from here. Mm, when I'm away, when I'm all over the place, I'm, I'm proud of saying I'm from Grimsby and Cleethorpes. We, we've got a lot to be proud of, mm. but we need to also be aware of where we need to create that future. And like you said earlier, the future isn't ours, the future is the young people. So our jobs, we are custodians. I am a custodian of, of Horizon Youth Zone. I won't be there for 20 years, 30 years somebody else will come after me so my job is to make it as sustainable as possible for the next generation there's somebody listening to this today isn't there somewhere that may well be the next ceo absolutely and and i would welcome that Mm. because it's it's a it's a role it's going to take all my energy and i'm very passionate about it but at the end of the day i'm a custodian yeah definitely no i, I feel the same yeah. um tell me a little bit more about the details then of, of, of how it's going to work how many people can you take how many members can you have what does it cost when will it open um all, all of the stuff tell me about the stuff all of the stuff so i'll start at the, probably at the beginning then so membership wise we're expecting between two and four thousand members 
Um, it, it's a until you see the plot of land mm -hmm. or walk past it, you don't actually realise how big it is. I walked it for the first time about three weeks ago, and, and even I had to sort of close my mouth <laughs> because I didn't realise how big the site was. Yep. It, it's a big old site, so uh, it's a it's a good it's a good few hundred more at a time that can be accommodated across all the different sort of twenty activities. No. Oh. Cheers. That's Cheers. Apologies. That was that was on silent. <laughs> this phone's terrible. My work phone does not like to go on silent, um, and that was on side ringing. Oh. Um, so um, it's five pound a year membership, and then it's a fifty p a go uh, for the young people coming in. Um, and a hot meal will be a pound. But one of the things I'm going to be working on closely with um, the team is uh, finding an organisation or a trust or a grant that can very quickly support uh, Horizon with funded hot meals. It's something I'm particularly passionate about. Mm -hmm. So at Manchester Youth Home, where I was on placement, they do not charge the young people for the hot meals, and that's because they've got a patron that, that supports that. And I think that's something that Horizon uh, needs to be doing from day one, if possible. Interesting. Um, uh, activities wise it ranges from sports to uh, catering to mentoring employability and entrepreneurship uh, personal well-being uh, music production IT climbing wall gym um, try boxing all sorts so we're, we're trying to work to what we're working towards a model of around 20 activities available for young people Opening then, um, so we'll look to open in late summer 2025 um, uh, and yeah, there will be a, a soft opening where we invite local youth groups, schools, uh, dignitaries, people that are interested to come and look. There's going to be some snagging so we need to make sure that all the snagging has been dealt with. And then we will work towards a, a, a grand opening later in 2025. And and those numbers that you mentioned, which are, are staggering, two to four thousand members. That's that's just off the scale. I had no idea it was going to be that many. But even in my rudimentary understanding of maths, based on the figures that you said, that doesn't seem like that's enough money uh, to make the whole place work for a year uh, and and beyond. So what what are the plans? How does the, how does the business side of the youth zone work and what can we uh, you know who can we find that can that can help that okay so uh, the on side model is uh, it's a really unique model actually in that we will have cornerstone and founder patrons mm -hmm. so uh, for ex and then we've got other grants and, and trusts that support the youth zone so the capital funding to build has been fully raised so hence why the the contractors and, in there. And how much is that? Um, it's a, a good few million. Okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's a big build. Yeah, yeah. I, was gonna, I, I just want to give people the yeah. the, the sense of the scale because this yeah. isn't this isn't a small project. This is not a small project. So this is millions of pounds mm -hmm. um, going into the regeneration of this particular part of of Grimsby Town Centre. Mm -hmm. um, it is then going to be supported through uh, charitable donation. So Horizon is a Grimsby-based charity. So we're, we are not, uh, from any other part of the country, we are a Grimsby-registered charity. So we've currently got Cornerstone and Founder Patrons um, um, across North East Lincolnshire, really. So we've got Orsted, Allied Protec, the Police and Crime Com uh, Commissioner, DFDS, DB Wholesale, Schroeder's Green Co, Prax, yeah, so they're some of the big hitters. Yeah. But we're also supported by Historic England, the Heritage Fund, and the National Lottery Heritage Fund, as well as St. James Place and the Charitable Foundation. Mm -hmm. So this really is a, a whole community and in partnership with North East Linkage Council as, the, as part of the Greater Grimsby Town deal and the regeneration. So if there was a shout out here now, as I've listed all of those off beautifully, <laughs> um, it would be that if you are an organisation across North East Lincolnshire and you are passionate about giving back to the community, please get in touch because what you, the support you could give to Horizon Youth Zone could help a young person have a hot meal, try a new thing, find a vocation, build some confidence 
and be your next employee in a few years time they are the labour markets of the future and I know that's something that a lot of our founder and cornerstone patrons are very passionate about is the labour force of the future so yeah please reach out please get in contact with myself or with uh, via the website if you're interested in becoming a founder patron of Horizon Youth Zone. Fantastic, thank you um, for going through that. Um, and final thought, Lucy, because uh, it's getting dark outside. And, 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 you know, we, we... I know, and my phone's going to ring again yeah, exactly, soon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Final thought from you, um, the thing that you're looking forward to seeing the most? Those young people walking through the door. <laughs> That's got to be it. What another? What is so special about this project like I said earlier, we've got some amazing youth provision already across North East Lincolnshire. What is so special about this project is where it's located. It's right in the middle of town. Mm. It is for the whole of North East Links. Whatever ward you're from, whether you're, whether you're Immingham, whether you're Laceby, whether you're Aylesby, whether you're Grimsby Town Centre, whether you're wherever you are, whether you're Cleethorpes, whether you're Hennage, whether you're South Ward, it doesn't matter. It's about opportunity for the young people of North East Lincolnshire. And for me, that is really, really special. Mm, I agree. And, and, it's, and it's great. I can see the look in your eyes as you're telling me that. And I know how much that means to you. And, and hopefully to a lot of people listening to this, um, as you've heard Lucy say, just get in touch uh, over the next few weeks and months to support where you can. It's a brilliant project. Um, I'm, I'm delighted to, to have any sort of involvement with it, even if it's just, um, you know, messing about as a podcast host today um, uh, but it really does fill me up with pride and so hopefully everybody looking and seeing what's coming over the next 12 to 18 months will feel the same you've been listening to the as yet untitled podcast <laughs> on behalf of the horizon youth zone with myself richard askin and my guest tonight lucy otwell key lucy thank you so much um, finn gray has been our producer this evening thank you to him uh, and thank you to Vodafone for putting the call through in the middle of that recording when, <laughs> when it was clearly on silent. We'll see you somewhere soon for episode two. Uh, but for the time being, thank you very much indeed. Bye.